Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Carmine Sabia for Explain America, and a former Trump official has just given a horrible, horrible, well, prediction about what could happen with the Trump trials, and it could be deadly. Before we get started, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Those little things really help us out, and they help our channel continue to grow. Big shout out to the Facebook and YouTube followers who keep doing that. We love you guys. So... There was a man on CNN speaking to Jim Acosta, and he worked, he was the chief of Trump's Homeland Security Bureau when he was in the Trump administration. But when he was in the administration, he was writing letters to newspapers under the name Anonymous, warning about the dangers of a Trump presidency and just basically attacking Trump every chance he got while he kept a position in the administration and kept collecting his paycheck. Now, he was on CNN and he said some really horrible things about what could happen with all the rhetoric that's surrounding the Trump trials, but he left out some important information that I think is pretty pertinent. But first, let's take a look at what he said. Online threats against grand jurors who voted this week to indict former President Donald Trump in Fulton County, Georgia. Some jurors have had their addresses, phone numbers, and social media accounts shared on the internet after their names were made public in the 98 page indictment joining us now to talk about this and other aspects of uh, the trump case is miles taylor he's the former chief of staff at the department of homeland security during the trump administration the author of the new book blowback a warning to save democracy from the next trump and i suppose there's the current trump uh, as well to to talk about um you know he's made these inflammatory comments about uh, the judge about the special counsel uh, and so on in these cases. You worked in his administration. How do you think this is going to play out? Because, I mean, I've talked to, um, was talking with John Dean about this last night. It's, it, it's going to be difficult to constrain him. And it seems as though he thinks he can just cross the line and nothing's going to happen. Well, based I, on past experience. Genuinely, Jim, I've been living inside of this data about political threats and political intimidation. And I worry legitimately that people are going to die. And we are seeing the threat of political assassination in this country is off the charts. And the experts I talk to compare it to only one thing, the 1960s. And we, of course, saw political violence. We saw political assassination in the 1960s. God forbid that happens, but the data supports that there is that danger. Look, we just saw the president of the United States threatened with an assassination plot. We saw on January 6th, the vice president of the United States threatened with death. We saw Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, her home broken into. That's the presidential line of succession, not to mention the senior members of Congress, the Supreme Court justices who've been threatened with death, the governor of Michigan who had an assassination plot, and this array of state and local election officials. So I do worry about it. And we saw after his home was raided a year ago, uh, a, a man went to the FBI field office in Ohio and shot it up. The judge here in D.C., after he was charged, has been threatened with a assassination and of course now the jurors in Georgia in the case after he was indicted have been doxxed and threatened. I do worry we are seeing the light blinking red. Now all of that sounds really terrifying, right? But here's the thing. He left out James Hodgkinson who shot up a congressional baseball game in 2019 seriously injuring Representative Steve Scalise and others and he was a Bernie Sanders supporter. He failed to mention that the Supreme Court justices who were threatened well, they're conservative Supreme Court justices. He failed to mention all the threats against Trump and Trump's children and Trump's supporters that happen all the time. Where are those, where are those threats? No, he only wanted to focus on some fringe conservatives who are crazy by any standards, threatening you know people they perceive to be enemies. Look, if you're threatening people because of politics, you're already crazy. And it doesn't take a lot to push you over the edge. That doesn't mean people can't speak because there might be some crazy person out there. Because we all we all speak. We speak on social media, we speak on Facebook, we speak on YouTube, we speak everywhere. And if we have to worry that one word we say might cause some wacko to go do something horrible, well then that really stifles free speech, doesn't it? And maybe that's what they want to do, really. Maybe they want Trump to just not defend himself. Maybe they want to blame him for everything. Well, that would be a switch, right? That'd be new. Folks, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Who's really in danger here? Who's really getting the most threats? I want to know in the comments. Also, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, because that really helps us out. I'm Carmine Sabia. This is Explain America. We love you guys. God bless you.
Take care, everybody.